Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're outdoors again. Praise the Lord. So, this thing came up about the Spirit of the Antichrist Challenge. So, I thought I'd make a quick video, along with the brethren that have been making videos. And I don't know if any of the enemies of absolute truth, servants of Satan, have made any videos. But, um, the verse was 1 John 4, 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Okay. Talking about the Antichrist spirit, is come in the flesh, versus has come in the flesh. And it's Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So Old Testament, let's go to first, if you want to turn to John chapter 1, verse 1. You know, the trained people can't handle this verse. In the beginning was the Word, capital W Word, talking about Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus was there from the very beginning before anything was made. How do we know this? Colossians 1.16. If you want to turn to Colossians 1.16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Okay? Jesus was there from the very beginning. Jesus is come in the flesh is a phrase that you say, for Jesus is eternal. He's there in the beginning. He was there uh, in the four Gospels. He's there. He's alive today. Is come in the flesh. He's alive today. And he's alive in the future. He's eternal. He's God, capital G, God. Okay? And, how, and you say, well, did Jesus ever claim that, that he was there in the beginning? Well, if you turn to John 8, verses 58. Okay. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Okay. Now, Lord, real quick, capital L, Lord, in the Old Testament, I believe is always a reference to Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, there is but one God, capital G, God, the Father, and one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. But right there, Jesus said, before, a before Abraham was, I am. There's the word was, and then I am. Jesus is claiming he was there before Abraham. Okay. So we have the Bible saying Jesus was there in the past. Jesus is come in the flesh in the past. Okay. What about the New Testament? 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, First of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus is in the flesh today. He's alive. I serve a living God. Uh, one of the songs I like singing sometimes is, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what they say. Okay? We serve a risen Savior, a living God, not a dead one. He is come in the flesh. Acts 14.11 Good example of people trying to worship other gods, like the Trinity, and being corrected on it. Acts 14.11 and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconian, I can't pronounce, I never can't pronounce that one, 
Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men, and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garland unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are of men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and sea and all things that are therein. Capital G God, a reference to the Father, but in context here it's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who is God the Father. Jesus Christ is capital G God. But you had these people going to worship men. You have people out there where we're saying, no, no, the Trinity is pagan. You don't worship the Trinity. It's not in the Bible. You worship the Godhead. That's in the Bible. Okay? So, New Testament. One last verse for New Testament. Okay? Once again, we saw Jesus claim to be in the Old Testament. Does Jesus claim to be everlasting? Is come in the flesh. Okay? Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. If you want to turn to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Capital L, Lord. There's but one Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay. Claiming that he's everlasting. Okay. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And this whole challenge, what I wanted to warn the brethren about is you'll have people out there that will say, Oh yeah, yeah, we believe Jesus is come in the flesh. But what do they teach? And eventually, I have it down, so I don't want to skip ahead. So let's get into this. People who claim it, but deny it with their teachings, with the life they live. Okay. One of the teachings that they'll attack is the Godhead. And when they attack the Godhead, they're attacking Jesus is come in the flesh. They're attacking it. Jesus isn't fully and completely God. He's a third of God. He's the second member of the Godhead. Okay, he's lowercase g, God the Son. Okay, they will attack it. They might sit there and confess it, but over time, they'll slip up and you'll catch them. Okay. Uh, Jesus, let's see, what is it? Jesus did not have a body in the Old Testament. I didn't think anybody taught this, but evidently, there's people out there teaching that Jesus didn't have a body in the Old Testament. In other words, Jesus is not come in the flesh. He has come in the flesh when he came to earth as a uh, born of a virgin Mary. But he's not is come in the flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but when they teach that he didn't have a body in the Old Testament, they're going against that scripture. Okay? So with their words, they're denying it. They're saying he has come in the flesh with their teachings, but with their words, they're saying, oh, no, no, we believe he is come in the flesh. Another false teaching, Jesus is the archangel Gabriel manifest in the flesh. What's going on there? That's an obvious one. They're denying that Jesus is come in the flesh. Okay, Jesus was just a prophet. Was just a prophet. Jesus was in the flesh. Okay. They're attacking it. They teach that. They can turn around and say, oh yeah, we believe Jesus is come in the flesh. But they teach he's just a prophet. They don't believe that. Jesus was just a historical figure. Kind of like with the lost world, uh, atheists and stuff like that. They'll either say he didn't exist or they'll just say, well, he's just a historical figure. You know? So... Uh, King James Video Ministries, Brother Brian, and Sinners to Repentance, uh, JT, Brother JT, and um, I have made videos also. We've all made videos defending the Godhead, proving what the Godhead is, and that the, what the Trinity is, and they're not the same thing. We've proven this, and the people who totally reject it, why? Why do they reject the Godhead versus the Trinity? Okay, they reject... Godhead. They reject the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. There's people out there who reject eternal security. They reject the true gospel. Why is that? Well, as we read in that verse, uh, 1 John 4, 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is 
come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. They want their Antichrist. I've done teachings, and I'm pushing this, the Jesus Christ versus a Jesus Christ. And I'm realizing there's not thousands of different types of Jesuses being preached in the world. I mean, we went through that list, you know, Jesus is just a prophet, he's just a historic, doesn't matter. There's two types of Jesus being taught today. The Jesus Christ singular and a Jesus Christ singular. You have Jesus Christ and the Antichrist spirit. And yes, the Antichrist in the flesh will show up someday. Those are the two that's being preached, okay? And that's what they love. So Romans 7, 1, if you want to turn to Romans 7, 1 real quick. There's two verses we got to go to, and this is the heart of everything, of what's going on, of people who attacked what we call doctrinal teaching that is a salvation issue. Why? Because that doctrine preaches a certain Jesus, the Jesus Christ. And people who go against it, it's because they're worshiping a Jesus Christ, the Antichrist. Uh -huh. Romans 7, 1. Now ye know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye may be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. I had to read this because one of the teachings I was teaching about is when you're lost, you're married to the law. Okay, the law of sin and death. And when you come to God broken in a truly repentive state, you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You confess both in prayer to, sh to show that you're not ashamed. And people who take prayer outs because they're ashamed. And you ask God to save you. And when he saves you, that's dead. That husband dies and you're free to marry Jesus Christ. Spiritually speaking, you're, fr you're free to marry him. Okay? And the reason I had to point this out is because now we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians 11.1. 1, the heart of the matter. 2 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ, by fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm going to stop there for a second. Godly jealousy, you're supposed to be married to Jesus Christ. But you got these people that are married to the law, to the world, and as we find out, uh, they choose in the Antichrist. They're married, spiritually speaking, to the Antichrist, who says, see the world? I'll give you that. You just have to worship me. That's Satan's ploy. He tried it on Jesus Christ and failed. Now he's trying it on the world, and he's being successful because mankind loves their sin. They love the world. They love the Antichrist. Who's the lowercase g god of the world? G, uh, Satan. Okay. So, that's what's going on here. But what's, how do we know that it's talking about the Antichrist? Verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, the Antichrist, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, the beast, which we have not received, or another gospel, the false prophet, if you have all these false prophets out there, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Who's the him there? Satan. Talks about the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety. Where's Satan going to end up? Hell or tossed into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity? If you worship the tr pagan trinity, if you worship a Jesus Christ, false Jesus Christ, where are you going to wind up? Hell and then tossed into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity? That's why we try to warn the brethren not to get confused, and we try to warn false converts, hey, you need to be worshiping the real Jesus, not because we're being mean, 
not because we like, you know, controversy and everything. We're doing it out of love, saying, hey, we don't want you to go to hell and be tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Okay? Right there, we see what's happening in First and Second Corinthians is you've got false converts, you have false prophets coming in and telling them a Jesus that they want to hear. A Jesus that, not, that has come in the flesh, not is come in the flesh. Okay? Now... Romans 16, 17, talking about false teachers. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. The Godhead is major doctrine. So is the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. It preaches a different Jesus than the post and mid-trib. Eternal security preaches a, the Jesus Christ, and those who attack it by their, I've earned it with my faith, or I've got to do good works to get it, they're attacking the real Jesus Christ. Right? The gospel, if you don't believe in the true gospel that's found in the King James Bible, and you go for a false gospel, you're not worshiping the Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh. Okay. Verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. I had to throw in there, but their own bellies. You got people out there in ministries that it's about the money. It's about the attention. Uh, some people like to debate and argue and fight, and they'll attack anybody to do it. Okay? We know those types of people. But with good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay? They'll say, well, yeah, you know, Jesus is come in the flesh, but they'll say it in a different way. They'll start twisting it in a way that sounds good, that's pleasing to the lost world. False converts who love their antichrist versus the Jesus Christ. But they'll also flat out lie about it. Oh, I believe Jesus is come in the flesh. But then they turn around and teach the Trinity after being told the truth, taught the truth. They still turn around and teach post-trib mid-trip. They turn around and teach you can lose your salvation, or you have to earn it. Um, they teach a different gospel. Okay. John 8, 40, John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. These people that use good words and fair speech is deceiving the hearts of the simple, which we just read. Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's a liar and the father of it. Okay. And what's I'm talking about? Um, when I say, we've already seen it with some teachers. They're slipping up, and their heart's coming out. And they're not making mistakes, and they're coming back saying, okay, I repent, I said it wrong, I made a mistake. Some, of do, some people will do that if it, if it upsets the crowd, you know, their income, you know, their fame. But for the most part, we're seeing a lot of them slipping up, and they're saying things that are wicked and satanic, and people are going, amen, amen, because they're all mentally ill, and they love their antichrist. They love a Jesus that's okay with sin and loves sin. So, Luke 6, go to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For all the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Um, there was, uh, I think it's uh, Charles Larson, I think it was. People might get on to me, oh, you're talking my God, my lowercase g God. I don't worship a man. I don't worship Brother Brian. I don't worship JT. I worship the Jesus Christ of Scripture. And I had a brother under Brian's um, channel, the Antichrist Challenge uh, video, who linked a video showing that Charles Lawson was sitting there, to, and first he starts out telling people that that book you have in your hand is God's Word. And then he turns around and says that, if you don't believe that Jesus has come in the flesh, you are of Antichrist. And then he says, 1 John says that. 
and you look in First John, and it's like uh, we just read it. It says is come in the flesh, not has come in the flesh. And then you look at all these Bible perversions; they say has come in the flesh. Why is he quoting from a Bible perversion? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. Now, if he comes out and says, "Hey, I slipped up and said it wrong," and he repents, that's great. That's a good thing. But I don't know if he will. But I, like I said, he just flat out and he was hardcore about it. These teachers that teach in the past is come in the flesh, they're starting to slip up and start saying, has come in the flesh. But into the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, John, 8, John chapter 8, verse 44. We just did that one, I'm sorry. 2 John 1, 7. Okay, we're going to end it with this one. 2 John 1, 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. They have the antichrist spirit. Remember what Paul said, if anybody preach and, uh, uh, receive another spirit that we haven't received. That's why they're called an antichrist. They have an antichrist spirit. Now, I this video here purposely. I've been cutting some trees down. My brother was helping me when he came to visit. See this tree right here? This is people that are falling away. We're in the last days where it's almost like it's resting on the ground, but, you know, that last little bit before it hits the ground. These things make a loud noise when they hit the ground. But you have all these people that are teaching Trinity, post and mid-trib, or eternal, uh, they attack eternal security, or they preach a different gospel, they attack the God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. This is what there are. They're like a dead tree just laying on the ground. They are dead, spiritually. But they claim to be one of these standing trees that are standing up. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I believe that. I preach it. I teach it in my teachings. Okay? Yes, the Bible says they say it. They confess it. It's with your mouth. But be careful. Look at what they teach. They're going to start leaning to the point where, like, like some of these other teachers where they're, slit, they're turning from saying God is manifest in the flesh to God has or was manifest in the flesh. He was. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They might have not come out yet and verbally admitted that they believe he has come in the flesh, but look at their teachings. Be careful. Okay. So, do I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Is that what the Bible teaches? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's what I believe. So, uh, thank you brothers for watching, and I will see you when I get the next video out.